In this video, we're going to be adding text-to-speech capabilities to our Sonos within Home Assistant. Make sure you stick around if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Real Sorry's Tech, and today we're going to be adding text-to-speech capabilities to our Sonos speakers within Home Assistant. To do this, we need to install an add-on, configure our developer account within Sonos, and then create an automation in Node-RED. So let's get going. So to get this to work, we're going to have to install an add-on into Home Assistant, and that will run as a little server uh, to enable the text-to-speech to work. Now this system does have a few negatives, unfortunately. Um, Firstly, it isn't integrated directly into the Home Assistant text-to-speech. We've actually got to use an HTTP request, a get, or a curl, or a rest, or whatever, I don't really understand, um, to get it to work. So that's a bit faffy, but I'll show you how to do that. It also uses the cloud, unfortunately, instead of locally connecting to your speakers. Um, so that's a shame. And the third negative uh, is that it doesn't currently work on speakers that are in sync. Now this also includes group speakers, but there is a workaround that is being built, so fingers crossed that will come out soon. Right, so what we need to do is to head over to Kevin Vincent's GitHub, and you can see it's very well documented whether you're using a supervised setup of Home Assistant or, or not, and you just want to install it in Docker. Um, so the first thing we need to do is head into Home Assistant, and we need to go to our supervisor tab. Now in here we go into add-on store and we add a new repository. Now unfortunately for some reason the link to Kevin's github doesn't work so we're going to have to use this one from Berg Cyril. Apologies if that is incorrect. Uh, we copy that link and we paste it in. It's just a fork and it seems to work much better for some reason. Um, so once that's there we can see it at the bottom. We need to install it. And whilst that's being installed, we need to head over to the Sonos Developer Portal. In here, you need to create an account. If you don't have a developer account already, I do. Um, but if not, just create an account. It's free and easy and works. And then we click on Integrations. And we click New Control Integration. We can give it a name. Click continue, give it another name, and create a key. So we want to copy the key and head back into Home Assistant, uh, go into the configuration, and the key is the client ID. We also want to copy the secret and put that in here too. We can then save and start this add-on. We now need to set our redirect URL. We leave the callback URL uh, and you can choose whether you leave it as hasio.local or for me, I'm going to put the IP address of my home assistant in there. And then we can save that. And you need to leave it as HTTPS even if you access it through HTTP, apparently. And then once that's done, we need to authorize our setup. So again, we can go into a new tab and we want to go to that path there. Okay, so if that link doesn't work directly, you may need to ditch the S on your HTTPS. Not sure why uh, I had to do that, but I did. So there we go. And then we sign in and this time we're signing in with our normal Sonos account, the one that you log in on the app or on the normal website, not your developer account. And then we give it permission. And then you'll get another error. And you'll notice that the URL has gone back to a hasio.local. So change that to what worked before, and then it will pop up with a message saying auth complete. And that means it works. Fantastic. So now we've got it, we need to use it. But before we can use it, we need to work out how to use it. 
Um, and for that, we need to know which devices we can use. So we can copy this third link, again, replacing what we need to to get it to work. And then we get a nice little JSON file showing us our devices in, that are available and their ID. We're going to need those IDs later. So that is that. Now we're going to need a few helpers. So I'm going to go into Visual Studio Code and add a couple of helpers. I want an input select first, and that is going to copy and paste all my speaker groups from my Follow Me music, uh, and we're going to call it Sonos DTS. I'm also going to create an input text. We're also going to need an input boolean, and that is going to be called Sonos TTS. Then we're going to need to reload our billions, no, our input texts and our input selects. Once that's done, we can have a quick check in the developer tools that they have appeared. Um, now we can see all of them here. We can head into Node Red. And in Node Red, we're going to need a number of nodes. We need an event state node. We need a current state node. We need another current state node. We then need a function node. And finally, an HTTP request node. We can link them all up. So, our event state node, our trigger, this is going to be the input boolean of Sonos TTS. When it's on, we do that. We're then going to need to get the current state of our input select, which hasn't loaded. And that we want to output the payload into message.root. We can kill that. We then want to add the input text. And that is going to output into message dot message and then we get into the fun one now the function node um, what I will do is copy and paste what you need to put in and then walk you through it so we define a variable player we then let our text variable equal message dot message and then we do a switching based on message.room. So if message.room is the sitting room, then player becomes this code here. And that's the code that we got from our JSON file from our API call earlier. So it's the same as these IDs here. And we just put them in there for each room. And obviously the text is based on our message.room, our message.room, which is based on our input select. And then we have a message.url. And this message.url is kind of copied from the file. So in the file, you can see that you've got hasio.local, then you've got a player ID and you input it there, text and you input there, and a volume which you input there. So I've done a similar thing. We've got 
instead of hasio.local, I'm putting in my peer address. We then have a, instead of the player, we add in, so we're concatenating, 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 adding in, putting in the player code here. And then instead of text, we're putting in text, which we stole from message.message. .message. And then I've set the volume to always be 20. Uh, you could use an input number and add that in here as well, if you wanted to. But yeah, that's up to you, I suppose. Um, and then once that's done, that outputs as message.url. And that will fill this box here, this URL box. So. What we can do is deploy this. We can head into our Lovelace. We can create a new little card. Just going to duplicate this card. And so we've got going to do it in the cave. We're going to output the text dinner time. And then when we press this button, it should make the noise. Dinner time. Oh my god, it did. Then if we want to change it, we can call it and trigger it again. Time to eat. So there's a little tiny delay, um, but actually not that bad at all. And that is very impressive. What you'll probably want to do is add, speaking of delays, add a delay node in there and a cool service node. And we can just get our cool service node to Turn off the Sonos text to speech Boolean. So then when we're in so then when we're in our Lovelace and we trigger this, after five seconds it turns off again, ready for next time. So the reason I've obviously done this with these inputs is it means you can not only do it manually if you wanted to uh, just through Lovelace, if you wanted to type a message in and, and send it, broadcast it to a room, uh, but you can also obviously fill out these this information through an automation. Now, obviously, if you're going to want to broadcast to multiple rooms at multiple times, you're going to need to do multiple commands, uh, multiple kind of HTTP requests, um, which makes it more complicated. Uh, until the ability comes that you can do it to grid speakers, which again, fingers crossed, is coming soon. As always, there are links below to the GitHub for the add-on uh, and also my GitHub where you can find my final flow. So you can copy that in and, and work alongside. So there we go, text-to-speech on your Sonos speakers within Home Assistant. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.